The following broadcast is brought to you by Accelerate Church. Accelerate Church is located in Amarillo, Texas at 4400 South Crockett Street. If you're in the area and would like to stop by for a service, we would love to have you. Our service times are Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. If you'd like a copy of this message for a loved one or for yourself, please give us a call so we can get a copy in your hand. Our phone number is 806-418-8913. We also invite you to download our app. Our Accelerate Church app is available on your Apple or Android device. You can listen to previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, as well as watch live streaming at the touch of a button. For more information about our ministry, log on to AccelerateChurch.cc. Welcome to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. My name is Jeremy File. I'm the pastor at Accelerate Church, and we want you. We have services at 10 a.m. Central Time, also 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. If you can't be with us in person, you can always stream at AccelerateChurch.cc. I'm here in the studios at Accelerate Church, and I have my pastor, Dr. Mark T. Barkley, with me. Hello, sir. Praise God, and hello to all those who hear you and follow you and help you. It's a great day to serve God. In fact... There is no better way to live on this planet than to walk with God. Not just meet Him, but walk with Him. Yeah, absolutely. And here we are, though it's the last days like we established yesterday and we're talking about, and I'm sure most of our listeners know that. uh, You need to know that. If you don't know that, you're running out of time. Though it's the last days, you should be excited because right in the middle of these last days, uh, there's a blessed hope for those of us that are alive and remain in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we should be sober. Yeah. Sober-minded, I mean. Yes. And, well, we should be sober in other ways, too. But uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with not always being overjoyful, happy. When you look at some of these things that are going on in our planet, in our country, our city, our families, our schools, our government, that doesn't make you happy. And even when you read, and you dealt with this yesterday a little bit about let's not be afraid— God didn't give us these warnings to put fear in us. God's not the author of fear. Right. He put faith in us so we know what to do, right? Yes. But some of this stuff is sobering. It makes you meditate. You say, wow, I hope I'm right with God. Yeah. I think I better make sure I'm right with God. And that's the reason for a lot of these warning verses. Yeah, and there's a lot in the Bible about this. And in Timothy is where we read yesterday there in 1 Timothy And over in 2 Timothy chapter 3, I want to talk about this. It says, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Well, I'll tell you what, that's that's the day we live in. It's a minefield. I'm a former Marine leader from the Vietnam era. I trained Marines. There's a thing that back in the day, they have different terms, I think, now, but back in the day, they would plant mines. But we called them minefields. So we were taught... Certain fields look like they're a minefield, and therefore there could be mines. And therefore, walking across this field could become extremely perilous. Mm. One step in the wrong direction, and you not only could kill yourself, wound yourself, or the people around you. This word perilous is in there on purpose. Yeah, It's not a mistake. It's not a bad translation from the original text. God's trying to tell us, we who would be alive in these last days, this is what you better pay attention to, because this is what could hurt you really bad and what could maybe even take you out. So again, it's not a fear thing. It's, hey, take my warning and do what I say. Yeah, and perilous, you know, you looked that word up in the Greek, it means difficult to deal with. Yeah, thick. So we live in a time, it's difficult to deal with, but for who? This is written to a pastor once again. Yeah. So it's written to the New Testament church. Yeah. And you just have to realize this. You don't need to be afraid the Lord is with us. You know, and if God is for us, who can be against us? You got to remember those kind of promises. But with that being true, don't forget these are perilous times. They're here. We're right in the middle of them. Well, you know, if you kept reading that set of verses in uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, If you read down through there, there's not one mention of a tornado, a hurricane, an earthquake, pestilence, famines. 
Now, those all are listed yeah. uh, time and again, even from Jesus, about what would happen in the last days. The right. days you and all these things are happening in the weirdest places. Uh, every, no, who's going to argue with that? Right. Is there but happening? This chapter was written to talk about the deterioration of the human soul, mm. the misbehavior of human beings that would make life really hard to interpret and really hard to deal with and also dangerous. Mm. Wow. Well, and some of the things that we read here, if you don't mind me reading verse two, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. The I am generation. It's all about them. Well, you, right now we have people marrying themselves. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm not I mean to laugh. It's really not. No, funny. they 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 really are. I'm serious. They're having now. They're just married. They're having holy matrimony because they love themselves. Huh. And you you don't have to take my word for this, but I don't put anybody on a search on the internet because oh, no. you, you know you'll stop at the wrong bus stop, <laughs> and then you'll hold me accountable for more filth and more heresy and more junk that's out there. <laughs> it's a trash pit most of the time. Wow. There's some good stuff out there, like you know that. But you love yourself more than, more than God, more than yeah. your Christianity, because that's exactly what it's saying. You're interpreting that very right. Yeah, the covetous, they'll be boastful, boasters, they'll be proud. False accusers? Yeah. I mean, it's just— Oh, wait a minute. False accusers? <laughs> oh, Jeremy, wait a minute. Did I say false accusers? You said false accusers. Because there saying. is so much lying and false accusing— uh, on our anti-social media platforms, yes, that I'll be shocked if there isn't severe judgment in people's lives for crossing that line, just making mm. up stuff. Wow. Well, that's that's where we live. I mean, uh, this is where we're living in America. This is what we see happening on a daily basis. Disobedient to parents. Yeah. And yeah. and here's a yeah. big one that just kind of blends in with all these. Unthankful. Now I've seen a lot of unthankfulness. Absolutely. Now, my big, the one, when I read this, the thing that just jumps out of the page to me, now, uh -huh. now all of these are serious. Uh -huh. So we don't say this like right now, you listen to me, you little truce breaker. We're re you, you should do the same. Jeremy and I are reading this like, oh my God, let me see if any of these traits are in my life or any of these things are creeping in right. to the way I'm feeling or thinking. But here's my big one, Jeremy. Having a form of godliness, mm. but denying the power thereof. Some of the, not. I don't want this to sound like all large churches are bad, but a lot of our even bigger churches, massive churches, they have no, they have no God in there hardly. Wow. They hide the Holy Ghost. They, they're, they're afraid it's going to offend pagans and hellbound Philistines. So we're going to redesign our church our preaching, our music, our lighting, our buildings to please a pagan, thinking will attract them, wow. but they but you won't convert them. No. You might become attractive. But to the wrong people. But you don't have any converting power. There I call them massive hospitals. These some of these bigger, bigger God empty churches, fake churches, placebo churches. Uh I call them hospitals with many beds. They're all filled, but there is no medicine. No medicine, no cure. No, no cure. No help. No deliverance. Now, I've noticed this, that there's a lot of rebellion that cloaks it, itself with a form of godliness. Have you seen things like that? Sure. It sounds accusative, and that's not our heart. Right. We don't mean <laughs> to sound that way. But then again, the Bible says we judge no man to damnation. That's not our place. But it also says in the New Testament— Ye which are spiritual, judge all, all things. things. What things? Things that are being said. Things that are being taught. Yeah. Things that are being done. You know, things. Yeah. If we don't, you can't, how do you raise your babies? They become teenagers. And if you don't teach them how to judge properly, they won't know what car to get into and what car not to. Exactly. And we get it when we go to the grocery store. The other yep. day, I, yep. I went with my wife. I don't hardly ever do that. And she told me, go over there and pick some pears. Well, I like pears. My kids like pears. 
And, you know, what kind of buffoon would I have been to go and pick all the rotten ones? Right. We get that. We get that. You know, people, well, I don't believe in judgment. I think it's wrong. Like you said, we're not talking about judging someone to hell, judging motives. We don't know people's motives. But I can tell you this, I can judge fruit. That's a fact. There, We have going on a God complex. Mm. People still think they're their own God. They forget they're bought with a price. They are not their own. None of us, not just preachers. We are not our own. We've been purchased with the, the, the price of the spilt blood of Jesus. So being that's the case, why do we have to debate the Bible? <laughs> we don't debate other stuff that just happens in society. Right. My pastor for years was John Osteen. He's in heaven now. But Pastor John used to say, Mark, I can go out there and it's amazing. I can teach them the truth and they'll say, oh, I don't know, Pastor. I don't want to be deceived. I better study that out. I don't know if I agree with you or not. <laughs> he said it's so idiotic wow. because the same people will believe a lie in a heartbeat and say, oh, you're kidding me. I didn't know that. Man, wait till I tell my friends. They never challenge it. They only challenge God. Only God. Only the scriptures. Only what the pastor says. That's amazing. Uh, we're here. We're in this we're end time hour. You we're go to the next chapter in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and it says in verse 3, for the time will come, I wrote it right here in my Bible, has come, mm -hmm. yes. when people will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they'll heap to themselves teachers because they have itching ears. So what does endure mean? <laughs> what, 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 they won't endure wow. sound doctrine? Let's capitalize a moment or two on the word endure. So endurance here means they won't tolerate it. They can't tolerate it. They're mm. so weak and brain feeble and soul offended that they won't endure it. They won't tolerate it. They're not going to put up with you teaching sound doctrine. Wow. They're going to say you're judgmental. You're wrong. You're, you're just mean. You have no love. You have no shepherd's heart. But really all you're doing is speaking the truth. That's the Bible. Yes. In love. And that makes people angry because it says they'll turn their ears away from the truth and they'll be turned to fables. Talk nope. to us about fables for a minute. Well, nobody turned them away, first of all. It was a decision of their own, just like it could be for you and me, to just say, no, turn. I'm turning my ears away, meaning I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm leaving the church. I'm out of here. I'm turning you off. I purposely choose to turn my ears away from those speaking the Bible. That's, that's what truth means. On purpose thing to do, to turn your ears away. On purpose. Now, a fable is not a fantasy. Mm. So maybe we want to pick this up again tomorrow. Yeah, let, let's, let's pick this up tomorrow. I, I hate the enemy on the wall, the clock. Is yes, ticking. yes, but we got to we gotta do and it. Let's talk about that. We'll pick up right here tomorrow. Hopefully you're blessed by what you're hearing. Again, don't be afraid to be don't hearing be about afraid. end times. All you got to do is live right. If you live right, then you'll be excited to hear the message that Jesus is coming. Yeah. I'm yeah. Jeremy File, the pastor at Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas. I'm honored to have my pastor with me this week, Dr. Mark T. Barclay. If you'd like more information on him and his ministry, go to marktbarclay.com. That's Mark T. Barclay, spelled with a C, dot com. You can travel coast to coast all over the nation. Yes. And you've traveled all over the world in the past, and right now you're focusing on America, and we need help in America. Just go check that out. Once again, it's marktbarclay.com. Be sure and tune in tomorrow here for the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. You've been listening to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. And if you'd like a copy of this message for a loved one or for yourself, please give us a call so we can get a copy in your hand. Our phone number is 806-418-8913. We also invite you to download our app. Our Accelerate Church app is available on your Apple or Android device. If you're in the area and would like to stop by for a service, we would love to have you. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street in Amarillo, Texas, and our service times are Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We look forward to meeting you very soon.